Love. One of our greatest emotions, a force of nature that has inspired art, music, literature, and even entire civilizations. We've all been captivated by love, its loveliness, its complexity, and its ability to leave us gasping for centuries. Yet while poets and romantics have written about it as an affair of the heart, have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what exactly is going on in your head when you fall in love? Welcome back to our channel, everyone. Today we're diving into the incredible neuroscience of love, a journey into the inner mechanisms of your brain as it experiences one of life's most renowned emotions. Why is that initial spark so thrilling? Why do some people click with us and others don't? And how does the subtle dance of hormones and neurotransmitters create that intoxicating mix of emotions we call love? From dopamine to oxytocin, from infatuation high to long-term attachment security, we're breaking it all down. We're recording this episode for the hopeless romantics, the curious minds, the skeptics, and those who just want to know themselves better and others in general. So relax, snuggle up in front of a hot cup of tea or coffee or whatever tickles your fancy, and get comfortable. With me, you'll discover the chemistry of the magic of love. Let's take this fascinating journey into the brain's most romantic secret. When you first meet someone, something magical happens. Your brain goes into overdrive, setting the stage for what we all call falling in love. But what is really going on in your head? As incredible as it sounds, it's all thanks to an efficient team of chemicals, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Together, they mix what we can call the love cocktail. Let's break it down. First things first, dopamine. You've probably heard it called the feel-good chemical, and for good reason. When you're with the person you have a crush on, your brain is filled with dopamine, and you'll feel euphoric, excited, and energized. It's like your brain is rewarding you for just being around them. That's why that text or that small smile from your crush will make your day. Next, there's norepinephrine, the chemical behind that telltale bodily reaction. Your racing heart, sweaty palms, and those mythical butterflies in your stomach. It's as if your brain has activated the alert switch, sharpening your focus and amplifying your emotions. That's why, with the person you're falling in love with, you're so attuned to everything they say and do. Finally, there's serotonin, or more accurately, the sudden drop in serotonin. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that goes to work on regulating your mood and leveling out your thoughts. But when you're in love, the levels drop off the charts, and that might be why you can't seem to get the specific person out of your head. They're there because your brain is rewiring itself to prioritize this connection over anything else. Together, these three chemicals cause the intoxicating sensation we call love at first sight, or the first part of falling in love. It is not fairy dust, but science at its finest, making that unmistakable mix of euphoria, anxiety, and fixation. This is only half the story, however. As we are about to learn, there is more happening behind the scenes to keep this roller coaster going. Now that we've exposed the brain's role in those first sparks of attraction, it's time to look closer at how love is built. Stick with us because next, we're discovering how the feelings build into something even stronger. You won't want to miss it. Having surveyed the chemistry of attraction, let's get up close and personal with the machinery behind it all, the engine that is your brain reward system. In the center of this complex machinery is a major player, the ventral segmental area, or VTA, better known to you as your brain's pleasure center. The VTA is one of the oldest parts of the brain, evolutionary-wise, and it's crucial to our survival. It's what gets us to do pleasurable things and reward us for them, so we'll do them again. From food to reaching our goals, the VTA is your brain's biggest supporter, urging you to pursue the things that give you a sense of pleasure. And love? It's one of the strongest motivators of all. When you're in love, the VTA goes into overdrive and floods the brain with dopamine. The high creates a powerful feedback loop. Every encounter with your beloved makes you feel pleasure and reward, so you'll want to stare at them, talk to them, and fantasize about them all the more. Your brain is essentially saying, this person is crucial, hold on tight. In fact, studies have discovered that the brain of someone in love is identical to the brain of someone under the influence of a drug such as cocaine. They're both operating on the same reward systems, and that is why love is so addictive. It's not just an emotion, 
It's an entire neurological response intended to capture your attention and keep you wanting more. But here's where it gets really interesting. This reward system isn't purely for short-term gratification. It's also designed to foster long-term bonding. As your brain grows accustomed to this other person, it starts to transition from the thrill of new love to a steadier, more profound connection. And we're going to examine that transition in just a minute. South. Next time you just can't get enough of someone or you get a high from the very sound of their voice, just remember, it's not just in your heart, it's in your brain reward system. It's that intricate mechanism that makes love so unbeatable. But what happens when love is long-term? What holds the bond together after the initial rush fades? Stick with me because in the next section we're going to examine the incredible science of lasting love. Falling in love is a heady process of attraction and reward, but what happens when that first spark becomes deeper? That's where two amazing chemicals, oxytocin and vasopressin, take over center stage. Combined, they're the unsung heroes of attachment and bonding glue to long-term relationships. Well, let's start off with oxytocin, which affectionately goes under the name cuddle hormone. This, anyhow, is released at times of physical closeness minor hug, holding hands, or during intimate sex. Oxytocin should be viewed as a chemical that deepens emotional bonds and therefore stimulates feelings of trust, comfort, and safety toward your partner. That's why you feel so close after having a heart-to-heart -heart talk and why a simple hug can be so healing when it is from somebody that you love. But oxytocin isn't just about touch. It's also about emotional closeness. In couples, studies show that in meaningful shared activities, oxytocin levels rise to reinforce the bond between the two. It's the reason small rituals like cooking dinner together or sharing a morning coffee can feel so special. They're not just routines. They're moments where your connection grows stronger. And then there's vasopressin, oxytocin's partner chemical. Vasopressin is closely linked with commitment over the long haul and even monogamy. Where oxytocin makes you feel connected with others on an emotional level, vasopressin fosters feelings of loyalty and attachment. It helps one feel protective about their relationship and driven toward continued growth in it over time. Together, oxytocin and vasopressin work behind the scenes to create and maintain that deep sense of attachment. They're the reason love evolves from an initial whirlwind of excitement into a steady, comforting presence in your life. They don't just help you feel love, they help you build it. Well, here's the beautiful part. The science of love isn't just about chemicals. It's about what those chemicals enable us to do. They enable us to create long-lasting attachments, to share our life with someone, and on days when things seem extremely tough, to have one's back. So the next time you feel the spark of a hug or find comfort in your partner's presence, you can thank oxytocin and vasopressin for doing their part in making your love story. But of course, there's much more to relationships than science. It's a beautiful mashup of emotions, experiences, and growth. In our next segment, we'll take a closer look at what love might go through and what your brain can do to help you navigate it. Keep watching. It's a conversation you won't want to miss. We've delved into the chemistry of love and how it helps us connect, but ever wonder, why do we have love in the first place? From an evolutionary perspective, it comes down to two key objectives, reproduction and survival. Love is nature's ingenious way of bringing people together, not just for companionship, but for something far bigger, survival of our species. When two people fall in love, they create bonds that are strong enough to see them through challenges, something very critical for our ancestors. Alone, it was much tougher to survive, but together together, we had a fighting chance. Pair bonding. The precursor to love had little to do with romance per se. It was about creating a stable environment in which children could grow, prosper, and eventually perpetuate the family line. Love cemented partnerships in place, long enough at least to raise children to independence, providing emotional glue. It gave our ancestors the reason to stay close, protect one another, and share resources. And now, it gets even more interesting. It's an evolutionary drive for love that scientists believe extends beyond the reproductive relationship between partners. The bonding with friends, family, and even the community all stem from that very same need to survive and thrive by leaning on one another. Love, in all its forms, has helped humans build societies, foster cooperation, 
and create connections that go far beyond biology. And so, the next time you are reflecting on the power of love in your life, remember this. It is not just a fleeting feeling or a poetic ideal, but a gift from our evolutionary past. A well-wrought tool designed to help us not just survive, but to build with others a meaningful life. It is what made us stronger together than we could ever be alone. And yet, as powerful as love is, it's not always easy. It comes with challenges, heartbreak, and growth. How love shapes us, not just through the happy moments, but through the struggles, is what we'll explore in the next section. You won't want to miss it. Falling in love is one of life's great experiences, but it's also imbued with excitement, connection, and hope. But what happens when love doesn't work out? When the person that once made your heart race is now the reason it feels shattered? Heartbreak isn't just a poetic metaphor, it leaves a very real mark on your brain. Here is something surprising. The parts of your brain that light up when you are in love also light up when you are heartbroken. Why? Because heartbreak sets off your brain's reward system in reverse. It's a sort of emotional withdrawal. The chemicals which give you that euphoric, connected feeling in love are now in short supply and you're left wanting and hurting. In a way, your brain is mourning the loss of that connection. Dopamine, the feel-good chemical, plummets, which is why you feel so low. Meanwhile, cortical, the stress hormone, floods your system, amplifying feelings of anxiety and sadness. This combination can make heartbreak feel overwhelming, even physically painful. And yes, your brain does interpret it as pain scientific studies have shown that the brain regions activated by heartbreak are the same ones that process physical pain. No wonder it hurts so much. Well, the thing is, heartbreak is as much a part of the human experience as falling in love. Your brain is wired to help you heal even when it feels like the pain won't ever go away. With time, those same neural pathways that once magnified your pain will adapt, enabling you to rebuild and move on. While it might not seem like it right now, heartbreak has so much to teach us about what we need, what we value, and what we're really capable of. It is that bittersweet reminder that love is never wasted, even when lost. Love molds us, it helps us grow, and sometimes paves the way for new connections. Maybe heartbreak is one of the toughest things we go through, but it's also proof of just how deeply we're capable of feeling. And in time, understanding, and support, your brain and your heart will find its way back to love again. Now, in this next section, we explore in greater detail how love and heartbreak change us with time, molding who we are and our relations with other people. So don't go away, because this journey is far from over. Falling in love is actually one of the coolest things our brains can do. Whether you've recently fallen in love or remembering the loves of the past, having a clue about the science behind it is going to make you fall even more in love with this feeling. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with the person you love. Thanks the channel to continue creating similar videos. See you soon, stay curious, and take care.